Okay, I wanted to take a little time to go over sign charts, which is a concept you probably learned in your algebra classes, but I wanted to do a review here because it's become so important um, when we get to derivatives and we're trying to figure out where functions are increasing and decreasing. So sign charts, as I said, help determine the sign of a function on a given interval. So one place you may have used them before in a college algebra class would have been to determine when a function was above or when a function was below the x-axis, and this would have assisted you in graphing the function. So let's consider the inequality f of x equals x squared plus 3x divided by x minus 2 and determine when that's greater than 0. So we notice if we're going to do this problem, the first thing you might want to do is factor the numerator and factor the denominator as well if it is necessary. So we end up with x times x plus 3 in the numerator and x minus 2 in the denominator. So next we'll find the points of discontinuity and where the function is equal to 0 because these are going to be points that are going to be important to look at. So if we look at the denominator, we see that x minus 2 is equal to 0 when x is equal to 2. So this will be a place where that rational expression would be undefined, and so that's a denominator equal to 0. And then if we look at the numerator, we see that we have to solve and find out when x plus 3 is equal to 0, which is at minus 3, and x equals 0 is a simple one, so of course that's when x equals 0. So now we know when the numerator is equal to 0 and when the denominator is equal to 0, and these points, x equals 2, x equals 0, and x equals minus 3, are going to be important points, threshold points, some critical points we might consider them to be later on, where the function actually changes its sign. So let's introduce a number line, and on this number line we're going to put those three critical points that we found. So we have minus 3, 0, and 2. And so next we're going to list our three factors, x, x plus 3, and x minus 2. And our goal now is going to be to determine on this number line when each of those factors is negative and positive. So we'll start with the first factor, which is x. We know that x will be equal to 0 at 0. If we choose any values to the left of 0, then that function x would be negative. And if we choose any values to the right of 0, that function will be positive. So now we have the sign line for the factor x. Now let's look at x plus 3. It'll certainly be 0 at minus 3. If we choose a value to the left of minus 3, say minus 5, minus 5 plus 3 is negative 2, so to the left of minus 3, that factor is negative. If we choose a factor to the right of minus 3, say 1, and we plug that into the factor, 1 plus 3 is positive, so all of the um, values of x to the right of minus 3 will cause that factor to be positive. Again, you could check in each of the 1, 2, 3 regions to the right of minus 3, and you'll see that's true. But whatever it is in one of those regions, it will be that in all of the regions because x plus 3 is what we call a linear function or a linear factor. Now let's look at the last factor, x minus 2. Of course, that will be 0 at 2. So when x is 2, x minus 2 will be 0. If we pick any value to the left of 2, say 0, and plug that into the factor, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and so therefore everything to the left of 2 is going to be negative. If we pick a factor to the right of 2, say 3, 3 minus 2 would be 1, so every, fact, every value of x to the right of 2 will cause the factor x minus 2 to be positive. So now we have sign lines for each of our factors. So let's look at them um, in conjunction with each other. So to the left of minus 3, I have three minus signs. And if you look up at the top, our inequality says that we're either multiplying or dividing the factors. So when we multiply and divide, if we have an odd number of minus signs, then the product or quotient will be negative. So to the left of minus 3, the entire rational expression is negative. If we look in between minus 3 and 0, we see that two of our factors are negative and one of our factors is positive. We have an even number of minus signs, so in that region, the entire rational expression will be positive. Between 0 and 2, we see that we have two plus signs and one minus sign. And so if we look at the 
rational expression again. It's a product and it's a product and it's a quotient. So we have two plus signs and one minus sign. So in that region will be negative. And finally, to the right of two, we see that all the factors are positive and therefore the entire rational expression will be positive. So if you look at our sign line, which is our number line that has been separated into three or four, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four pieces because of the three critical values we found. We know exactly where on the number line our rational expression, f of x equals x squared plus 3x over x minus 2, is greater than 0, equal to 0, and less than 0. So again, we have down here a picture of the actual graph. And you can compare that to what we have up here on the sign line. And now we just remember that the plus signs mean the function is above the x-axis, while the minus signs means the function is below the x-axis. And so we're ready to write an interval now. We see that this rational expression is negative between minus infinity and minus 3, not including the endpoint minus 3. It's positive or greater than 0 in the interval minus 3 to 0. Negative again on the interval from 0 to 2. And positive on that interval from 2 to infinity. So if we remember, we wanted to know when was our rational expression going to be greater than or equal to 0. And so if you look in the green box, we have two ways to write that. It's going to be greater than 0 when x is between minus 3 and 0, or x is greater than 2. Or we could use the interval notation, where we were right, it's the open interval from minus 3 to 0, union with the open interval from 2 to infinity. So I hope this helps with your review of how to use sign lines to determine when functions are greater than 0 or less than 0. And as I said before, we'll be using this a lot in the future.